being here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, we appreciate it. I, I guess my first question is, if you had to sum up what the last year for you has been like in one word, I know you probably can't do it in one word, but what would you say? A blessing. Um, you know, it, 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 do you wish that, it, that I had my old jobs back? Well, of course you do. I mean, you know, had a great career, thank God, and it was moving along. And, but at the same time, we had a daughter that was a senior in high school this year. So I got to be a part of all of the, the, the activities leading up to that, including her graduation day. Our son played on a state high school lacrosse championship team this year and got to go to every single game. So it's my first summer off baseball in 34, 35 years. I get harp on all the negative stuff, but sure. there have been a lot of positives too. Sure, absolutely. And, and I don't want to harp on the negatives, sure. but I think it's important to go back to last summer. Yep. Uh, in that moment, when that word comes out of your mouth, and, and then also when you realize that that word was, was captured on a microphone, what's going through your mind at that moment? Well, I found out about it. It was a double header, and I found out about it uh, going out over the air, how that happened. I don't, I don't have any idea. And quite frankly, I don't care. It, it makes no difference. It wasn't like somebody was trying to make that happen. I'm the one that said it, so I've got to own it, and I've had to live with it and wake up with it every single day and go to bed with it every single night. And so, uh, but, but in between the games of the double header, it was pointed out that, that it had gotten out, uh, it was already on social media. And so I, I knew sitting in this little office building down at Fox Sports, Ohio. I mean, I, I, you know, look, you know, I was born at night, not last night, sure. right? So I knew it was, um, I knew it was over. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's not the easiest moment in the world for anybody, but uh, that's all right. We're still hanging out here now. You're here, yeah. And, 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 you know, I think a lot of people will say, well, he didn't know that the mic was on. A lot more people will say, why was that word even in, yep. in his vocabulary? Yep. What would you say to those people watching I right agree now? with them 100 percent. Why, why is it in my vocabulary? I think anybody, and it's not it for a second, to make an excuse for it. Because I, I've done my best to own up to this every single day, no matter what. The work I've done inside and been gifted by the LGBT community, by many in this town, Ryan Messer and Rick Worth over at the Children's Home in Northern Kentucky, both gay men, married men who have just opened up their arms to me and, and now I'm on the board of the Children's Home where they're working with a lot of children who uh, are gay and have been thrown out of their homes for being gay. Um, you know, it, 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 it should have never been said. Um, and, and it's something that a lot of guys that are my age, when you were a younger guy, it was just a word. Mm -hmm. uh, I've come to, to learn the, the real root of that word over the last year. I'm grateful that I have, and I'm thankful to all those people who have not said, and there are some out there, but have not said, you know what, this guy, this is who he is, this is what he is. I'd like to think if you were to ask those two guys and others in particular, Dan Davidson over at P-Flag here in town, uh, do they believe that, that Tom Brenneman is a homophobe? I would bet the ranch that they would say to you, not a chance. Tom, can you stick around for more after yeah. the break? Okay, we're gonna be back with Tom Brenneman. We're gonna, we're gonna not look back, but we're gonna look forward and what lies ahead for Tom Brenneman, plus your weather authority forecast coming up. We are back here live with Tom Brenneman in studio. Tom, again, thanks for being here sure. with us. Um, in the past year, uh, you were suspended indefinitely from the Reds mm -hmm. broadcast team. You were going to resign. You, you lost your gigs with Fox, national big broadcast. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you were a victim of what is a so-called cancel culture? Do you feel like people truly do have the ability to forgive and to allow you to resume your career? Well, I will tell you, I, I have avoided that term, cancel culture, at all, at all costs. But I will tell you this. When you live it and you go through it, it's not necessarily, you know, why didn't the Reds bring me back? Why didn't Fox bring me back? Where you see, uh, where I see a lot of the stuff where you just kind of go, man, is I'm doing a podcast. It's mm -hmm. called Dialed In with Tom Brenneman. I'll go to ask somebody to be on the show, someone I've known for a long, long time. They're like, absolutely, no problem at all. Then they'll go to their employer mm. and the employer will say, no, you can't do it. Yeah. So I'm getting ready to do some, some high school football games this year for Chatterbox Sports. And just yesterday it was pointed out to me that one of the schools here in town, a public school, and I'll leave their name out of it, it's fine, and they have the right to feel this way. But they're like, we don't want that guy coming in and broadcasting one of our high school football games. And it, there are moments where and I told my friend Bill Hemmer from Fox mm -hmm. News, he and I were old roommates 100 years ago here in Cincinnati yep. working at Channel 5 and, and lived up in Eden Park. And, and I said to him, I said, you know, I said, uh, you guys talk a lot about cancel culture when you're on the air. 
when when you start to live it, it is it is very much alive and well, and it is extremely selective. Yeah, yeah. It's not an alibi. It's not an excuse. I'm not saying woe is me. Sure. I said it. I earned it. But anybody who doesn't believe that there is not selectivity to the cancel culture out there, they're walking around with their head in the clouds. Well, you talked about the opportunities that you have moving forward. Tell us a little bit more about what you're going to be yeah. doing starting this fall, because you're going to be back in the broadcast back booth. Back in the broadcast booth doing uh, big high school football games, all the big games here in town for Chatterbox Sports. We kick off the season next Friday night uh, doing, uh, I guess, the two best teams in the state of Ohio, and both of them are here in our area, Lakota West against St. X, defending mm -hmm. state champs. So we're doing that game every Friday night. We'll do a game every single Friday night all over the area and uh, be doing basketball games after that. Got the podcast thing going on. Had some great guests from Urban Meyer to Joe Buck to Troy Aikman to, you know, my daughter who yeah. graduated from high school. And so uh, thank you. And so uh, everything's great. Yeah. I mean, I got no complaints in the world. Excellent. Well, Tom Brenneman, thank you so much for great being here. We appreciate thanks you for coming having. on. Thank All you. right. Megan, we'll send it over to you. All right, Adam, thanks. Now to a recall.